thank you for coming. Thank you, to, uh, thank you for listening to us. This is quite crowded. I'm very happy about that. We have a shared presentation. It's the three of us. I'm David, then there's Daniel and Sven. They will take over. I try to stay within eight minutes. Please don't blame me if I don't. I do talk a lot. Um, we are Mondlicht Studios, these guys also, and we're mostly into entertainment and automotive, and this is what I'm going to talk about. Our talk is called something with Catalyst, how is the community a catalyst for you in CGI? And this is the very thin red line, at least for my part, it's more... Um, you, you have to look for the community, Daniel will talk more about it, because with Launch Control they have an awesome community already. Um, so this will come a little bit later. And um, I want to start with saying everything is our personal opinion here. I will have some opinion to share with you at, uh, here and there. So um, please be aware that this is the case. A quick note about myself. When I started getting into CGI, this is what computers looked like, this is what the UI usually looked like, and this is unfortunately how I looked like at that point in time. <laughs> um, but I had a good time back then. It was just very enjoyable, but I did not have a community. I learned everything pretty much on my own, just trial and error all the time. And this is what I enforce every one of you to do. There, here are pros and beginners, I think, everywhere. So just dabble with it, have fun, and see where you go. Don't blame yourself. If you fail, from failure you learn more than from success. Um, so uh, the good thing about today, the internet is at your fingertips. You have a whole community, you have people you can talk to just like this convention, we can talk with each other. There are people who are very willing to help, which is an awesome thing. So I need to get on with it. The state of the industry, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty crappy year. Um, at least in our industry, everything ramped down a little bit. We are tied to the automotive sector. Maybe you read some news. I don't want to go down too deep into it because it takes too much time. It's just a little bit critical this year. Many companies have been shut down. Many people have been laid off. So why is it still a good time to get into CGI? I'm going to tell you because after rain comes sunshine. It's just a matter of time. Then um, if there's not enough commercial work, uh, it's a good time to increase your skills, to improve, fill up your portfolio, that's good. And we have a great community and Blender is free, so if you don't want to invest thousands of whatever currency you're using, um, you can use Blender, it's free, it's awesome. Please, uh, taking away from the keynote, uh, from the big guy, support it, donate, maybe a tiny fraction, it's worth it. What I'm talking about is CGI and advertising and automotive. So in advertising, you have a very diverse task. I can make up 20 different things. And automotive is like, yeah, it's always a car, more or less inside, outside, technology-wise. Um, so in entertainment, you want high quality, obviously, because you want it everywhere. But you don't want to cause a shitstorm. Well, this is very important, because people get worked up about so many tiny little details. In automotive, you want to show the correct product, which this is not, obviously, so it should look nice and be a nice, pleasing image. The product in its best light, the car paint, correct color, the wheels in the correct position, stuff like this. So there are many little things you need to take care about in detail. Entertainment, this is a good example. You see lots of different things and everything has its own challenge and I can go on about every project here, what was the challenge, like making a super crazy oversized print on the house in Madrid for example, um, is a challenge on its own. This egg for the gentleman in Moscow had 50,000 revisions. It was fun still. Um, in automotive, yeah, there's always a car involved in some way. Um, on the top left, you see technology, which is a little bit specific because you don't want to show the stuff which is how it really looks like because if you take it apart, it looks not nice. So it needs to look correct. Yeah, this is not plastic, this is cast iron or metal or whatnot. You need to take care about these details. Um, and I'm talking about nice imagery, cool stuff, cool animation. But for anyone who wants to get into CGI, there's so much more in the automotive industry, which is design, ergonomics, UI training, maintenance, sales, after sales, etc. So. With these few images, I want to indicate there is so much more. You don't need to be uh, working in, I'm making the best image, everything looks super nice. It's just maybe you work in design and maybe you work on a door handle for six weeks. That can happen. Um, you work in UI, you have to take care of very specific other things. In maintenance, it's gamification of how I built the car. 
And um, I worked 11 years for Mercedes-Benz, so I'm taking a lot of knowledge from that time, and I'm very thankful I had the opportunity, which is another thing. Use the opportunities you're having. Give it all you got, and usually you're rewarded. I at least believe in karma a little bit. So with the gamification, people were like, no, I'm f I can build this car faster than you. And then the people who are usually like, yeah, I have to screw this one together and this one, they are starting to have fun and really enjoy it. So, and this is also CGI. Um, this is an opinion. There's cool software and cool companies, and there's the opposite. So we're all married to Adobe and Autodesk to some degree. There were some controversial, uh, controversial conversations in the past. And um, to me, it feels like a shotgun marriage, because I'm using it. I have to use it in my workflow. We're trying to get away from it. And it's my honest opinion. It's just not cool. It's good software. I, can, I earned a lot of money with it over my 20 years uh, that I worked with it. But um, what's happening in the last years in subscription, don't let me get down this rabbit hole. Then there are good and annoying friends. Maxon is cool, but they are changing the UI. And I'm growing old. I hate it if I have to look for the button for the 50th time after the 50th update. Thank you for appreciating my pain. Um, so what about Blender? Where, where was it? Where is it now? Where will it be? It was smiled at. I also did it. I have to admit it. Like, yeah, it's cute. It's good. But it's, how, how will it grow? So thank you for making Blender what it is today. It's incredible that it's a free piece of software and it is here. So it is strong and it will only get better. I really believe that because of the community, because everybody here, because people improving Blender and these guys made an awesome tool and uh, I will come to that. These are the universal laws. Money rules the world. Blender is free. That's a good perk. And the beginners of today will be the pros of tomorrow. That you can't change it. It's how time works. How does a typical request look like? And you will see in two slides why I'm talking about this. It can be crazy complicated and everything I put here is something that makes sense, but I will not elaborate on that. So. Um, <laughs> Be nice and polite, obviously. And the most important thing I want to give you is understand who you are talking to. You can talk to an engineer, you can talk to marketing, everything is very different. Um, best case is both. There are good requests and bad requests. How much does a car cost? It's dramatically different. And if you give me a specific request, I can tell you this is what the car costs like. I'm speeding up a little bit. Um, this is what usually happens in your everyday life, but there are, um, th this is great, I love it, please, that's not my credit, I just rebuilt it visually. This is not how it works, but this is how it should work. Because the usual chain that you're going through looks like this, and maybe you're talking with this person, or with this, or one level higher, or another level, or another one, and the truth is, this is the case. At least these people are involved usually in your process. So, this is not it, this is it, usually. And these people are talking with each other, they have to. And the supplier needs to give something to the photographer and back and forth and everything gets a big spider web and you get tangled up and then you notice, damn, it's a two-way thing, it's not only one. Um, <laughs> so it makes things very complicated. This is also very universal, everybody knows it, I will not explain it. It's our everyday life. And something else is the good old PEP, the PAP. I just made it up, I'm kidding, because it's, um, it's still very, very wise. Preview, produce, uh, preview, approve, and produce, not the other way around. And I made this crappy abbreviation because we don't have enough abbreviations in our life. <laughs> in project management, I'm confronted with it all the time. It's crazy annoying, so at some point, you'll, ah, I don't want to ask what this abbreviation is, but just ask. They, people are throwing around abbreviations all the time. And it makes our life very complicated. And now to something which is not complicated and makes your life more easy, which is Daniel with Launch Control. And I thank you for listening to my part, and we'll give to Daniel. Yeah, thank you so much for that, David. So I'm Daniel Westerbeck. I work with Modelic Studios. I have a YouTube channel. And I also made a tool called Launch Control. And I'm here to talk about automotive animation which is also what we do at Modelict. First thing I want to say is automotive animation is hard. And just to prove my point, I've collected some few clips of the everyday life of a vehicle animator. You have stuff like this, steering that doesn't work. You have cars that go flying all of a sudden. You will most likely have some wobbly wheels along the way. You will have some ground detection and these sorts of issues. <laughs> um, so the list just goes on and on. This is just to say that automotive animation is a technical headache many times. That's why many times we're just cheating. 
So take a look at this, which is like pretty cool automotive CGI. And it looks nice until you realize that the, cam that the car is only ever traveling in a straight line. So behind the scenes is a little bit like this which I personally find very sad because I'm very passionate about making cars move in an emotive way and being able to tell a story with that. I don't want to just have it driving in a straight line. Sometimes we also just plain avoiding it. So you can go through Instagram, find beautiful pictures of cars, but very few actual animations. On the other hand, what we actually want to be able to do is a little bit more something like this. Here we have a car that's actually traveling around a racetrack. It's picking intelligently the racing lines that a real racing driver would do, and we're just recording the action. We can also do stuff like this, where we have a dance between the car and the camera. And all this just makes it feel more believable. We can also do things like this, where we have the car evading obstacles. Manufacturers like to show that sometimes. We can do cars that are jumping. We can do cars that are drifting, doing like 180 drift, 180 out from the Baby Driver films. We can do donuts, and, well, we can also do something a little more cartoonish, something like a little truck just going around, sort of emoting something, telling a little story with it. So this is what we want to be able to do, not just a straight line. In other words, we want a highly automated workflow that is art-directable, iterable, and flexible. And by art-directable, we just mean we should be able to control the result. We shouldn't just be given a result. Iterable means we should be able to reproduce it again and again and again and act on client feedback. And the last thing, flexible, we want one tool to do all the animations, not five different tools to sort of do all the different ones. And that's why at Modelate we're using Launch Control. So Launch Control is a vehicle rigging and animation tool that uses what we call one-click rigging. So you need four wheels on a body, and you can rig it. Um, it doesn't matter how it's rotated in the scene or how it's placed. And when you get started, you will be able to play around with the different animation presets. So we have some drifts. We have uh, some donuts you can do. And you can also do jumps. And you can also do loops, since the rig also works upside down. And with this, we have what we call the speed segment tool, which is just a way to animate your cars visually along a spline. So instead of having to deal with the outliner, or the, sorry, the graph editor, you would just be putting in speeds around the curve and then adjusting them, and Launch Control will do the interpolation automatically. We also have other fun stuff that we developed, like skid mark generation, just because it's cool. <laughs> and apart from that, we use, this ground, we use ground, contact, ground detection, which is automatic, so it doesn't matter how many objects you throw in there. Uh, the rig is just going to figure it out. And the last thing is something that I really love. We have physics that's running inside the tool in real time, and it's all simulation nodes in Blender. I truly love simulation nodes because they are so powerful and actually super fast as well. So we can do this with multiple cars at the same time, even on like low-end machines. And this just gives a much more dynamic motion when the car is driving over the environment. This is just the physics. Everything is calculated automatically. And the model we're using here is uh, made by the Experience Studio. So for the animation pipeline at Mundlicht, it usually starts with a high poly cat model, which is super heavy. So the first thing we do is make some low poly data, basically a proxy that we are then animating. So here you can see how at the bottom, we sort of have this proxy model that's doing the animation. And at any point, we can just swap it with the high quality data. And then we can show this for client reviews, or we can even render the final animation. This also has the benefit that when we are working multiple artists on a project, we can have one artist doing the animation in one file, and then another artist doing the actual shading and the model preparation in another file. And if there are any updates from the clients, they just drop in the new parts, like new front bumper, into the asset file. And thanks to the linking workflow in Blender with collection instances, everything just updates, like ripples down through all the files. So briefly on the animation stages. At Mundlix, like David was saying, we use PAP. We always start with a previs, which is preparation, or just trying to figure out if the client likes where the direction we're going in. So the first pass might just be basic primitive shapes. Later down the line, we start to add in more objects, actually building the environment. And the last thing we do is add environment interaction and also the physics of the cars. And lastly, I just want to say briefly a little bit about camera animation. And this is sort of the secret, at least in my opinion, for good animation for cars. So if you take a, look, uh, take a look at a shot like this one, it might feel like the car is going fast. But it's actually only going 50 kilometers per hour around this curve. 
So instead, what makes this shot feel faster is that we have the opposite motion. So the camera is traveling the opposite direction of the car. That's just a cheap trick to make it look a little more intense. Another thing is here where we're making sure that the car visually moves from side to side in the frame, which again makes it feel a little more dynamic instead of having this dead center uh, frame on the car all the time. Two super quick tips. Use the track to constraint. It's really good. Just make sure that you drop the influence down a little bit so you don't have this dead center track, because it always looks kind of CG. And then Shakeify add-on. Use it. It's great. I don't need to say more. <laughs> Last thing. We had the opportunity to actually go out on an airfield back home in Germany and record some cars doing some different accelerations, doing some braking, doing some turns and some slalom. It was a lot of fun, but we're also going to use this to improve the tool, first of all, and also our own eye for animating cars more realistically in the future. And with that, that's basically it. I will give the microphone to Sven, who will talk a bit about community and how it is to be a newcomer. Thank you very much, Daniel. Um, yeah, I'm Sven Gira. I'm 22 years old, and I'm basically a newcomer in this industry. I'm now about working for over two years at Mondlicht Studios, uh, mainly doing modeling, animation, and many more things. And I'm also part of the launch control team, also taking care of its community. And yeah, basically, in the beginning, both Daniel and I um, wanted to grow launch control into something bigger. And we thought about um, yeah, how we, we could do that. And so we did. We created this um, launch control center Discord community. Uh, our goal was to uh, both bring newcomers and professionals into a dialogue to, of course, improve the tool based on the feedback we are getting and also to help people with their projects. And we are also really happy that a lot of our members have been contributing on our server by sharing their amazing artwork. And that leads me to the next topic, uh, which is, yeah, for a long time now, many people from our Discord channel or on social media have been writing to me um, on how they could get into the industry. And um, those people were mainly newcomers and people who are just doing this for a hobby. And that leads me to the next topic, which is how to grow as a newcomer. And this is all my own uh, perspective based on my own experience. And I did that by first learning the technique and also by surrounding myself with information. For example, watching YouTube tutorials, Instagram, watching movies and so on and so forth. Basically, this is how your YouTube homepage should look like. Uh, <laughs> and um, also understand the main principles of CGI, which are these. Know that, for example, if you are in the modeling field, know that how your modeling affects all the other areas as well. And know how to transfer that knowledge, know that what polygons are, what edges are, what, and so on and so forth. Make it your own. Uh, basically, try to figure out your own methods and ideals. Develop an eye and don't just follow tutorials, but also nitpick the things that you need and uh, put them into your project. And in the end, most importantly, have fun. Uh, this is very important in order to keep your motivation going. Social skills, I think this doesn't just apply to CGI, but also in general life. Uh, but it's still very important. And uh, as David already said, be open and nice. That is obvious. Uh, say yes to opportunities. Do your own projects and uh, share them online. Also collaborate with other people. And do mistakes. The best way to learn is by doing and then also by doing mistakes. You should avoid doing the really bad mistakes but I think the small mistakes are good. And meet people, talk to them like I'm doing right now. And also try to leave a positive mark. And number three, artistic vision is uh, also my favorite topic. And be able to see the bigger picture. See the limits in your toolset and your knowledge and be able to advance upon it. 
For example, for a long time now, I haven't been really growing fond of uh, Blender's glare node in the compositor. And I looked around and um, I didn't find anything. But one day, our dear friend Ethan Davis on our Discord channel shared this amazing resource with us. And I tested it out and it worked perfectly. It fit right into my vision. And basically what I'm trying to say is, be able to see what's wrong in your project and then try to um, improve upon it based on the vision you have. Um, yeah. And also be aware, be aware of the details. Know that they can exist, but they don't have to. Sometimes details are great, and sometimes they take too much time and effort. This plays, especially in the automotive industry, a huge role. A few examples. Know that if you light the car, know which parts to highlight, for example, the shoulder line. Know that you have to um, display logos in a correct manner. Or, for example, based on the project and the customer, know which um, gaps on the, car, on the car, or as we like to call it in German, Spaltmasse. Um, know which ones to highlight or not to highlight. Or, for example, if you are in the modeling stage, know that if you mirror the tires, now the logos are all flipped and you have to flip it again. Or based on the scene, know which lights to turn on, turn off, uh, high beams, low beams, brake lights, etc. And uh, there are many, many more examples to that, but try to figure them out and then uh, you're able to uh, use them accordingly based on your projects. And that being said, don't be too hard on yourself. You really don't have to be a pro at 16 years old, and I think you shouldn't break yourself at that age. And my last point, which is also, which also applies uh, to today, um, is forward thinking. And basically what I want to say with that is um, be prepared and not fearful. Build a palette of knowledge and be able to advance upon it. And you kind of already did that by learning Blender. Now you know how to learn a software on your own, and you can apply that to every other aspect in your life as well. And have your own thoughts and plans. Don't just copy something that is being said online, but take the things you want, dissect it, and then make your own stuff out of it. And that being said, I want to say one last word to today's employers, because you play a huge role in all of this. Keep the dialogue with young enthusiasts and newcomers, and uh, talk to them. And that is it for my part. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll just all gather up on stage and say a few last words. Can I? Can you hear me? Yeah. OK, brilliant. Thank you for listening to us. Um, what Daniel didn't say, launch control is his brainchild. He did most of the work, and it's a brilliant tool. Obviously, we're here to talk about that, but also about our broader experience in the automotive industry and what I learned in 11 years working deep inside the automotive industry. You can transfer this to pretty much any other part of the industry. CGI is so much more than just this or that. It's a very vast field. So enjoy what you're doing. Make mistakes. That's fine. We're super happy you're here, for, you're here with us today, listening to us, and super humble thanks that we could be here. <laughs>